Hey there YouTube, I'm Ikitsu, this is the Ikitsu Times, welcome to my channel, welcome back to Solar War Arena. So I just want to go through some of the different unit types to help out new players that want to get into this game or are thinking of getting into it. Um, and just talk about the different units and how they get used, especially in the early tiers. So this is an Italian Swordsman unit, if we go into our army list here. This is basically an upgrade directly for the Militia Sword. Um, and they're a pretty decent sort of line of units, these uh, melee infantry. Now. Uh, Rome obviously gets sort of uh, more complex as you go down the line here until you get things like Eagle Corps, Praetorians, Palatine, uh, Imperial Guard, or what have you. Um, these units are all sort of along the same line, though. They've got very, very good high melee statistics against other infantry. They're okay against cavalry in the sense that they're a heavy infantry unit. They've got a lot of durability and armor, but the way that you want to be using them is engaging the enemy front head-on and sort of hoping that some cavalry comes along and flanks, or flanking with your other infantry units. That's sort of the way that you properly use these units. Now I'm backing these up with the REI because you always want to have some unit diversity when you're playing this game, just because at least it gives you that experience bonus. So we're going to go ahead and hit play, and I will see you in the match. Astra. But uh, yeah, when you're playing with these sorts of units, you want to make sure that you've got uh, a commander that is well suited for heavy assaults, for units, uh, Scipio is quite good, although of course um, Germanicus is also very good. You wouldn't want to use necessarily this sort of strategy with Caesar, because Caesar does better with uh, siege units and range units, in my opinion, than he does with uh, this sort of frontal charge army. So you want to synergize your army composition with the generals that you're using. Um, in this particular case, just having these heavy assault units and uh, Scipio's abilities means that I'll be able to push through charge pretty decent blocks of units. For instance, if I run into some spears, I should be able to beat them with my infantry. And that should be uh, all quite well and good. So I will see you once I get into a match. Okay, so here we are on the map. You can see that we've got a fairly offensive lineup sends this one uh, Leonidas player who's got all siege engines. I never like players that bring all siege engines because they're just so reliant. Um, it looks like our team is going for a very sort of a broad front here. I'm not sure where our Leonidas is going to be set up here. He's set up at 7. Actually, no, he's moved somewhere. 9. So he's going to be doing base defense. Um, what we're going to probably be doing is pushing up towards the enemy. And that is perfectly fine. We've located ourselves at 3. Now, with a sword and a spear sort of ideal, uh, you want to be actually using terrain to your advantage as much as you can because uh, ranged units have a harder time shooting at you, obviously. So we're going to be moving through the forest if we can. Uh, we could also be using the passes if we were on the other side, um, but we've got a sort of weaker right flank here. If we get attacked from that side, it's a little bit more clear sight-wise, so number 9 could potentially defend. So we've got Rex up here, who's going to be defending um, or providing us a line of sight to scout cavalry. And the Germans actually have some bonuses to scouts in general. I could put my units into this... Uh, what we're going to be doing is just pushing up along this flank. If we encounter any resistance here, um, we're pretty by ourselves because CS Starbucks isn't moving up, so you have to be aware of what your allies are doing. But we're going to move forward and try and get some vision in this wood here and see if there's anyone advancing through here. Oh. We're going to withdraw here because we don't know what's actually here. We don't know what's actually here. Um, and if there's more players here... Actually, we're going to go ahead and uh, take this charge. We're going to Wrath of Mars on this unit. So they have got more people along the flanks. 
Uh, we are going to attack this unit with flight successfully. We're going to charge this unit from this flank. And they got some people into that range unit over there, so uh, we've done quite a good job here. Oh, we're getting hit by artillery. Shit. Where's that coming from? Are those on just friendlies? Because if they are, I'm going to be awfully pissed. Those are friendly. Fuck. So friendly fire is a major concern in this game. You need to be very careful about it. Unfortunately, my ally does not... Jesus Christ, Burger Man. I'm gonna try and get out of there as fast as I can. So my unit over here is just gonna pin these guys down. I turned it around as soon as I could, but uh, we should be able to get behind these guys and finish them off. Yeah, these units are routing. And we're just gonna keep the pressure up on these guys. These guys have just gotten completely walloped on this flank. We're managing to overwhelm them quite badly. I'm gonna move these guys up because I don't want to be taking any more uh, fire from that goddamn artillery. Alright, so we've pushed through the side pretty effectively. Um, very, very heavy attack here. I'm gonna try and get out of here though because uh, like we're just taking friendly fire. You have to watch for when your allies are shooting into melee and try and get out of there as best as you can. Oh, crap. Okay, so we're also taking some uh, shots from their artillery. I'm not sure what's spotting for them. They could just be targeting area, honestly. There is an ability that lets you do that. Okay, we're just gonna try charging that. Yeah, there's their artillery. We're gonna try and move into this marsh over here as well. to get rid of this artillery here. Alright, and we should be... Yeah, this guy's not paying attention to his units at all. Alright, let's go ahead and hit parry here. That'll keep these units a little bit uh, better at what they're doing. Alright, and we'll continue on chasing them all the way to their little town there. We're gonna put a quick march on to these guys. We'll hit the war cry against these guys. So even though we've got an attack penalty here, it's pretty much worth attacking. You can see that these units that route take uh, a lot more damage. Alright. We pushed through here really, really hard. So hit parry on this unit. I want this unit back here. Be a bit of security against these uh, cavalry. Okay, we need to get out of uh, that formation here. We're going to move these guys around the flank here. I hope they've got a couple of units. They've got too much uh, here. Oh, crap. Almost. They're coming up from there, so we're going to move our units up to here. Oh, there they are. We're moving through water, which is really bad, but... Um, let's see if we can make it here alive. Ouch. In the name of Rome. Our commander has fallen. All right, my Ride commander's dead, but that's fine. The spirit wavers. Victory for Rome. And I think that that cavalry should be able to chase down and kill almost all of those uh, artillery pieces there. So what we're going to do in this case is uh, ready up our units into position. We're going to use Wrath of Mars on the spears here. I wonder why it's... Well, it's a cavalry ability, I suspect, but... By default. 
We'll use Wrath of Mars on these guys as well. Alright, and with the friendly fire on, those guys are going to be causing a bit of a problem to themselves. Alright. We're taking friendly fire, but you know what? That's probably nothing we can do about it right now. Um, the thing is, like, there's units that he could be attacking that are not mine, that are not in melee here. Like, it's just really stupid for you to attack. Like, I understand when you're attacking into melee and it's the only target that you've got available, but we're going to actually retreat these units back. Because uh, I'm worried about friendly fire. So if you're taking friendly fire, I, I try to avoid engagements. And my units are actually really... My units are really quite low, so... Although, getting the uh, rear charge against Man Bear Pig here... It's going to help quite a bit. Alright, that shattered through Man Bear Pig's unit. Yeah, and our units are all probably going to die in this attack, but, I mean, at this point in time, it's worth us uh, just sending our units into the fray, even if we get killed. And uh, this has sort of uh, been a pretty good match for us in terms of uh, our melee units. Our swords have managed to get into, uh, into the scrum and really kill a lot of units. these units over here. Let's get this unit of swords over there. Alright. I have no idea what's going on anymore, but we're seemingly uh, just plowing through them, I think. This is so chaotic. The last remnants of that unit are so annoying. Yeah, I can't even tell where all this damage is coming from. His units, uh, the enemy units have really reduced morale though, just because we're getting uh, from flanks and all that other stuff. He's got uh, fleeing units and stuff like that. So we're getting lots and lots of kills as we pursue. So that's helping out quite a bit. You can see the numbers dwindling just quite rapidly, but again, we've got very, very few men left. I don't know why they're charging the backs of us. They need to get you getting to this uh, archers, but there's also a bit of a Praetorian over there left. Hoping that we've got nothing in our base. Doesn't look like it. Yes, yeah, so we've got tons of troops left that uh, could be helping us here. Yeah, we're still killing a lot of their units, even though we've got very, very few men of our own left. What he should actually be doing is firing at this unit since they're not engaged in melee. But yeah, uh, this is what you need to be doing with your melee troops. Just getting in there and scrumming with it. Now, the enemy is probably not going to run anytime soon. Because uh, the enemy is in their final sort of redoubts. But let's go ahead and use parry on these units to increase their defense just a little bit. Shouldn't matter too much at this point, but... Yeah, we're just racking up points against these guys as much as we can. Try and kill this unit off completely, because uh, they will not run when they're in the center square. Alright, they're gone. Alright, and this is the last bits of units. And, uh, yeah. Very last man. Alright, no, they must have units elsewhere, but, uh... For now, that's the last of uh, 
that and we just have to cap now. So yeah, that was uh, what I was doing with melee units, and that's what you want to be doing with sword units. It's you know not just head-on engagements, but it's also flanking. It's about uh, making sure that you're not taking friendly fire from your allied units, because it's not just ranged units' fault, it's also the melee units that have to be paying attention and mindful of where attacks are coming from. And it's also about figuring out how to use the line of sight to your best advantage to avoid getting shot to pieces too badly. So my swords, you know, came out of this really worse for wear, but in the end, uh, we managed to pull through. So. Anyway, I hope you found this video enjoyable. Um, we'll actually let's actually do another battle. We'll talk about another unit at the end of this one. Okay, so the next thing that I think we should talk about explaining, you know, the role of cavalry and how to use cavalry in the game. So we're going to go ahead and remove this unit actually, um, and we're going to replace it with a tier one uh, levy rider. The reason that I'm doing this, of course, is that I actually kind of want three units of cavalry and to maintain the diversity bonus. It's actually better to, in some ways to just have three units of these uh, tier two riders, the scout cavalry. Um, you can tell that I haven't actually leveled my cavalry as much as I have my other units, but let's go ahead and get into a game. So your role primarily with these guys is to disrupt um, enemy formations to get at their ranged units and to scout. Uh, line of sight and vision in this game is ridiculously important, so it's actually very crucial that you get that. In fact, you get an increased field of view bonus ability as Arminius, so he becomes quite good at that role, uh, especially if you level this up a few more times. As you can see, it's a very expensive ability, 1,200 points to get that, but we're going to go ahead and get to a game, and uh, we're going to try and use our cavalry effectively in that regard. The last thing you want to do with cavalry in this game is to engage directly with other cavalry or even with infantry. Uh, you want to, at all times, Times be you know looking for flank opportunities to assist your allies yes but at the same time what you're more interested in is looking for opportunities to pick off ranged units to charge into those and to provide a line of sight for your and for your armies so it's a little bit tricky at times to manage because uh, things move a lot faster with cavalry but uh, let's get into a game and see how things go Okay, so here we are. We've got the city map, which is not necessarily a terrible place to be cavalry. What we're going to do is push this uh, observation point really, really early on. You can see that my team doesn't really have much other cavalry. You've got one other cavalry player here, plowing your sister. Classy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and lock in. You want to have a very forward position starting off as cavalry, even if you plan on playing defensive, because you can relocate very quickly. Now, you don't have to be the pushed up at the very, very front, far forward. You just have to be far enough forward that you can easily rush for these observation points and get that vision. If you see an engagement there, don't take it. Uh, what you're going to want to do is actually run away. Uh, typically until you can get your melee infantry up there as well to assist you. It's probably not the best position to be started in. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and rush this point. And once we figure out what's going on, cavalry has that advantage in mobility that can redeploy very easily. We're going to take this one unit of cavalry, though. We're going to move it down here. And this is where things can get a bit tricky um, in that I'm manipulating multiple units of cavalry in multiple different sort of areas and groups. So if you don't want to do this, I recommend just keeping them all together. That's perfectly acceptable. And uh, we're just going to try and get some vision here. And this is that moment of truth since we should arrive here just about the same time that the enemy does. Nope, we arrived there first. This cavalry is arriving there later. So we have now got a lot of map information that we wouldn't have otherwise had. We know it's clear down there. Uh, we know that this guy's got all tier 1 cavalry, so I've got higher tier cavalry than him. Actually, no, I haven't. I am looking at the wrong chevrons. I don't know what kind of cavalry he has. So he's moved into this woods here, but uh, we've got some infantry moving along the way. Let's go get this uh, map information again to figure out where he's going. Oh, crap. He's moving in and then moving back out. Okay, so I need infantry support before I'm willing to commit to this fight here. The problem is that our infantry has decided to bugger off along that way. So we're probably going to go ahead and concede the vision tower to them. Um, in all honesty, I think that my allies are not paying much attention. Looks like our allies have decided to take a very defensive stance, so we're going to move down to this side, redeploy, and try and uh, assist here. Where our allies have 
apparently gotten themselves into a real bad spot. Um, now, our allies are actually going to be doing just fine here, because the enemy is taking friendly fire. Quite a lot of it, in fact, so... We're just going to try and thunder our way down towards this fight. And, uh, if the enemy has committed their troops... Oh, shit. Fortunately, that's my cheap lower tier cab unit. So that's some interesting map information we just gained there. We're going to go ahead and charge these guys. And we're going to get ready to charge these guys as well. Let's go ahead and uh, use these abilities here. We need to move these cow. Why the hell? Oh crap. Let's see if we can slip past here. Probably can't. Alright. Let's move an attack over there. Don't think we're going to be able to save this uh, unit with our general in it, so we might as well just uh, use Frenzy here. Actually, we don't have... There it is. And, uh, yeah, we're getting completely overwhelmed here, but we took out one of their ranged units, and the thing about cavalry is if your army is not providing with good places to sort of flee to, if you're just sort of completely surrounded, then uh, you're in for a rough time. Let's move these cavalry back if I can. Okay, we completely lost one of our units. Yeah, all we've got left is this tiny remnants of this unit. But uh, that's actually okay, because we did manage to do what we were supposed to be doing, and our units on the far right that were not helping us look like they're actually about to accomplish something useful in that uh, they're finally moving along here. Now, if this guy had moved up his cavalry earlier, I would have taken the early cavalry engage, but as it was, it was actually quite nice drawing so many people into this stupid uh, fight down here. Because I think we're actually doing quite an, an admirable job winning it. Like, Azura here is fighting, like, three people at once. And he's not really losing. Um, like, he's basically fighting it by himself. I'm gonna grab up the map information up here. And, uh, this is something, again, that you can do if you've just got very, very little left. Okay, so... They've got a lot more units than I thought they did, but we're going to reach their capture point pretty soon. I hope. There's quite a large number of units, probably before they could get to ours. Um, now, this derpy fight in the streets is sort of petering down, which is good, because there's no reason for us to continue on with it. These units are probably going to march onto their capture point. And this fight is going to continue being as it is. It's not going to be, you know that interesting. So if this unit uh, moves away from there, I can actually swoop down and start attacking the siege engine, but it's not worth it while he's defending it with those spears, which is why, again, you want to have that combination. Uh, looks like we're kind of screwed over here for obvious reasons. I kind of expected us to be. Over here, we've managed to clean up. If he cuts off these archers with just one unit or something, that would be so fantastic. Even those partial units would be good at this. Still can't really attack this because he still has a full unit of spears defending. This unit is probably racking up a ton of kills from that defensive spot there. And uh, looks like I might have to be pushed off this point pretty soon, but... This has given us a pretty good scouting information. Like I said, the point of me playing Cavalry is not to get kills or make big plays. It's to pick at some of the units, take some opportune rear charges if I potentially can. I'm going to have to get off this point, aren't I? Actually, no, let's go ahead and get back on it just for a second, because there's no point in me even preserving these units necessarily, really. Yeah, okay, so we can still see what's going on over here. Um, so the thing is, like, we're going to get onto the capture point with a huge number of troops, and that's going to get us a very rapid capture. And you can see that our rapid capture bar is, in fact, very, very fast. So we are going to win this one. And, um, you know, I didn't play a huge part of it, but cavalry often doesn't. It's not a decisive factor in these games, uh, in, in the early tiers. 
And this is sort of what you want to be doing. It's getting that scouting information, and it's getting uh, picking off one of those ranged units if you can. Uh, take opportunistic rear charges to try and help out with Mali. Because units that are routing take casualties very, very quickly. So it's worth causing a quick route to a unit in a larger scrum, even if you don't end up wiping them or anything like that. You can see we actually got quite a few number of kills. Um, we did actually a decent amount of damage, uh, quite a few kills. A lot more than I really thought I had, even though it's, these are low numbers, they're not that terrible. Um, the more important thing that we did was provided a lot of scouting information. So that's one of the ways that you want to be using these early tier cavalry. I mean, it's right in the name, Scout Cavalry. If we look at our army here, um, once we get it to raiders, it's a little bit stronger. And if we were playing a different faction completely, like let's go and look at Julius Caesar here. If we were to look at my later game units here, the uh, this might be actually a bad example. Let's actually look at a Greek commander. I don't think that they gave uh, the Romans very good no cavalry. Right, so if we looked over here, we've got the Hellenic Cataphracts. And so if we were to get this unit, this would be a much better full front assault unit, able to crash through uh, melee infantry, I think. I haven't actually done this in practice, uh, so don't trust me on that for sure. But, you know, if, if you're looking at these sort of lighter units of cavalry, you're not meant to be breaking through enemy lines. You're supposed to be trying to find scouting information. You're supposed to be trying to get in there disrupt their attacks, cause them to go into weird places, and uh, potentially draw them out of position. And that's exactly what uh, we were doing in that particular match. Even though we lost a lot of units um, and we didn't get an, a huge number of kills, uh, we did do our role. So anyway, I, that's uh, looking at cavalry and sword infantry. Spear infantry we might look at, but honestly, spear infantry work very, very similarly in low tiers to sword infantry, so there's no real point in differentiating them. But um, yeah, for now, that's our video. I hope you found it enjoyable, and of course, as always, I hope to see you all next time.